Folks, thanks for joining us today. My name is John Dubas with Premier Marketing, and we'll be spending the next hour or so discussing one of the key products that many agents have in their portfolio throughout the year, but of particular interest during the so-called lock-in period. And that is the dual special needs programs that are available through many of the Medicare Advantage carriers. Today's presentation will be recorded, is being recorded, and will be made available through our website at premiersmi.com and on our YouTube channel as well. You'll notice in the software package that there is a section for both questions and chat. We find that generally we cover most questions through the course of the presentation, but we will make certain to address any of your inquiries um, to make assurances to you that the time that you invest with us today will be of maximum value to you. The presentations that we lay out for you appeal to agents across the spectrum of experience. So for some of you, some of this may be a review. For some of you, this may be brand new. But I think you will find value in this, regardless if it's your initial experience into this portion of the Medicare world, or if it's a review of some of the things that you've done in the past. So with that said, let's start with a wee bit of level set as to who Premier Marketing is. We are a national marketing organization founded in 1968. That's part of the Integrity Marketing Platform. We're licensed in all 50 states, acting as an insurance wholesaler through independent insurance agents such as yourself, with contracts available at the highest possible commission levels, and recruiting contracts are available to those who qualify. We do so through a full portfolio of products that address the entire spectrum of the Medicare programs on the health insurance basis, if you want to put it that way, through Medicare Advantage plans, which include the special needs programs, specifically the dual special needs plan that we'll discuss today, we also offer a full portfolio of Medicare supplement and standalone Part D prescription drug plans, those PDP programs that are in, integral in providing the medication coverage to those who want a standalone plan to for whatever reason. We also offer a full portfolio of life insurance and annuity products, including final expense life insurance and free need plans, but also long and short term care programs, disability income plans, and ancillary benefits that address the specific needs of your prospects and clients. When we look at the Medicare Advantage world, we have the national players for you through our organization and including many of the strong regionals that can make a difference for you in your target market. This is important because we see, particularly over the last couple, two, three years, a real emphasis on the players in this market involving themselves in dual special needs plans. And if you're a carrier doing that, you're investing in that portion of the market. And it can make a big difference for many of you because there may be an assortment of dual special needs plans in your market. And that can be very, very helpful for you. The carriers are investing a lot of dollars in this area, competing for your business. And I think that you'll find it to be to your advantage. When we look at the prescription drug plans, that national footprint carries through where many of these programs are available as part of your Medicare Advantage contract. A couple of notable exceptions. The Mutual of Omaha program is for their standalone prescription drug plan, separate contract than their other offerings. And Clever RX is actually a discount plan, not a uh, prescription drug plan, a Part D prescription drug plan, I should say. Those Medicare supplements, as I mentioned, we're looking at the other end of the spectrum in many cases when it comes to income of the Medicare Advantage beneficiary, but we want to make certain that you have within your portfolio an offering for all Medicare beneficiaries, and we have specific programs to help you market in this space and be successful as well. When we speak of those ancillary benefits, well, in each of those categories, you got the national leaders, and this offers us a unique opportunity to market year round. They aren't programs that are subject to lock in at any point in time. Uh, they don't require any additional certification and you can get up and going with them very quickly through many of the unique marketing programs that the carrier themselves offer and through some of the systems that we have here at Premier Marketing as well. Great way to add additional revenue to your agency, additional means of marketing, but of course, also 
taking care of the specific needs of your prospects and clients in each of these areas. When we look at the Medicare market, you get bombast bombasted with these all the time, bombarded, I should say, uh, Freudian in the first part, where you have the aging of the baby boomers with some of them working past 65 and deferring full access to their Medicare benefits. But then you will see that more than made up for by the under 65 population that are accessing their benefits because of medical disability through Medicare. An important part of our discussion today, because this is a very viable audience for a dual special needs plan, because look at this. This is information from Kaiser Family Foundation, and it talks about the dual beneficiary market and the numbers that are there uh, making this up. So we have almost 12 and a half million of the 63 to 65 million, depending upon what numbers you look at, of the Medicare beneficiaries are dualies. And that includes a substantial number that are full benefit Medicare, Medicaid enrollees, which is the folks that get the greatest advantage out of a dual special needs plan. You got the partials that allow you to market um, anyway and give you a greater latitude for uh, combo sales, cross-selling opportunities, but the under 65 population, as I mentioned, this is a great appeal to the, these individuals. And if they're disabled, in many cases, that comes with a bit of a challenge when it comes to the wallet or the purse or however you want to put it. So it's a very large uh, appeal to that segment of the audience that we pursue that's a little difficult to find otherwise. And so it gives us the incentive to reach into the market because plain and simple, there's a lot of people out there that need our help in this space. And it is one of the underdeveloped areas that people have when they go into the choices that they have when they access their Medicare benefits. We talked about how the Medigap or the standardized Medicare supplement programs tend to be the folks that have a higher uh, disposable income but you'll see many of the dual SNPs may be the folks that self-insure for the medical portion of it or utilize their Medicaid benefits, whatever level it happens to be, and have a Part D coverage to make certain that they have help with the cost of their drugs. Now, if they have Medicaid and they didn't select the Part D program, which is the case very frequently, this may be a population where they were assigned a Part D plan and it may not be to their best advantage. Uh, the medications they take may not have been on the formulary of the plan that they are assigned to. So there are a number of different factors that come into play where this is an area where we can be of help to individuals, particularly since the dual special needs plans in many cases offer those extra benefits, those uh, benefits that are social determinant of health led in many circumstances. If you have folks that, are, however, are already in a Medicare Advantage plan, they may be on a standard MAPD program where everything's bundled into one, and they may qualify for a dual SNP plan and aren't in one. It may be because they were unaware of it, or perhaps the area that they lived in in the past um, didn't have an offering. Uh, some of the more rural areas, that's very much the case, or some of the appearance of DSNPs has happened here fairly recently in the last couple two three years so it's something that can be of help to us when we look at the different um, pieces that come into play uh, where well, gee they're already on an MAP, MAPD plan John what are you talking about might not be the right one we talk about that all through open enrollment where hey it may be a different MA plan that's of greater benefit for you well if they qualify for the DSNP there's a world of difference in many cases with the benefits where it can really, really be of help to them. And it creates all sorts of marketing opportunities for us. So bear with us just a moment um, in the fact that, you know, we, we talk about many folks during the annual election period don't review their plans year over year. And that depends not on their basic coverage, because if they're in standard fee for service benefits or if they're in a Medicare Advantage program, the majority of them aren't doing a review, regardless of what the 40 million commercials on television happen to tell them, or the outreach that is put into their home through direct mail or other means. It gives us that opportunity 
as we are able to encounter individuals that haven't done a review, the need to do a review to make certain that the coverages they have in play are still their quote unquote best option. And that includes, as I mentioned before, the folks that just have a standalone Part D plan. It might well be they have just a standalone drug plan because that's all they know or all that was available when they enrolled into it a number of years ago and we have that opportunity to help them with better coverages. The market that we pursue for a dual special needs plan are, well, these are individuals that are of a segment within that non-reviewed coverage that really need our help because they are particularly vulnerable to any movement out of their wallet however big or small it might be. And when we talk about folks that qualify for a DSNP in full coverage, normally that's 100% of federal poverty level or below. And that is an area where extra dollars that you're able to save through one means or another for these individuals can make a huge difference, not only in the quality of care that they receive because they're able to access it with the frequency they need to, but it also, the quality of life they have. All of a sudden, there's not so much month left over when they run out of wallet money uh, occupants, we'll put it that way. So we have an opportunity there to make a key difference for these people that we visit with. And folks that are on a dual special needs plan, I don't mean the stereotype or whatever, but statistics show they tend to be of a lower education level. Not that they're ignorant or anything of that nature, but sometimes the vocabulary can make a huge difference in even the understanding they have of the program that they're on versus additional offerings. So we gotta make certain that we're able to translate the acronyms that are so, so common in our industry. This is pulled from the CMS website, the acronym guide that they have there, 4,420 acronyms. Now, if you've been in this segment of the business for more than an eye blink, you know, there's a ton of them out there. Man, every now and then I got to look it up myself. I've been doing this for over 25 years. And every now and then I'm going, okay, that's a new one to me. Let me look that up. So this gives us the opportunity to make certain that we're able to translate. But also in our translation, it reminds us to minimize our use of acronyms to make certain that these folks understand what is being offered to them and the differences between the programs that are there. Because we know in the standard election periods, we just finished the annual election period, and we have then uh, a lock-in, basically, uh, along with OEP, which we'll talk about uh, briefly. And just coincidentally, we have a special election period webinar coming up as well that go into these in great detail. And that's necessary because you look at the standard SEP chart, the standard special election period, there I used an acronym on you, and you'll go through these and a whole bunch of them have to deal with dollars. That's the population that we pursue for these particular products. And that's the population that gives us the opportunity to do so all year long because of those special election periods that they have available to them. And that makes a huge difference because on top of that, you have special, special election periods brought about by weather or other circumstances. Carriers are really good about announcing them to agents that are contracted with them but if you're new to this area you're sure not getting this communication are you some of them actually go into great detail as to when and where and how that can make a huge difference because once again is there a set in my target market that can make a difference for us in this area um, they're not reading the communications they get everybody who's on medicare either gets a paper copy of the Medicare and You handbook in the mail in October, or they get the ebook sent to them through an email address. That's the Medicare Bible, so to speak. Read through that bad boy as an agent. It's very helpful for us, but much like we don't always pay attention to every detail in our explanation of benefits on our own coverages, many folks understand that uh, they have this information available to them in one way, or another, but they aren't accessing it until they go to use it. So do we have tools that we can reach out and dispense the information that helps them with the programs that we're offering 
and do so in the manner in which they want to receive it. This population, you see a higher incident of in-person type of conversations. Some of these folks don't have access to the uh, electronic tools that we're becoming so accustomed to in the standard MAPD world or MedSup PDP world. However, there are opportunities for virtual presentations and then that hybrid role in, this, in the middle because this population, much like everyone else, has become much more digitally savvy, but the Medicare population especially so because we've been trained. We, gee, I'm not quite on Medicare yet, but the population has been trained by the delivery of their health care for this. The doctors, the specialists, even hospitals and dentists are offering telehealth and, you know, the lovely Zoom call appointments. For a period of time, that's about the only way you could access medical care outside of an emergency situation um, when the pandemic hit and for a little period of time there. And you even see some of the things that make us who we are as people, our lifestyle pieces that are being delivered digitally, our celebrations of our faith through our community in that fashion. Well, much of that has been done online and I continue to be online. And I actually try to do that as often as possible daily because of uh, the services that are available to me through my faith. So it's something that folks are accustomed to. And you will find in many cases that if the beneficiary themselves don't have access to that information, their children may well. And keep in mind, in mind children doesn't mean they're a 12 year old helping them with their computer. There might be a grandchild. But in many circumstances, when you deal with this population, you need to be aware of the fact that those children may be influencers as to that decision or may be the one making that decision for them. So that gives us then the opportunity to pursue things electronically as well. So something to consider when we approach this population. And as we approach this, how are we going to make this a key component of our marketing plan moving forward? Keep in mind, one of the questions that just popped up is, well, what are the commission on these products? It's the same as any other MA plan. So if it's their first foray into a Medicare Advantage product, it's that new to Medicare commission. Or commission. If it's something where they're already on a dual or an MAPD plan, it may be that renewal commission as well. But keep in mind, just about every carrier out there offers plans, Medicare Advantage plans, at the highest commission available. And that commission is dictated by CMS. So you see the same numbers in these products as you would in any other MAPD plan. But it also, in many circumstances, and, and particularly if you get into some of the more competitive urban markets, carriers are really doing some really cool things when it comes to support in pursuing this market. So we want to make certain that you understand not only the commission that you earn on these products, what the product itself is, but also how you help, how we can help you find these people, because that's part of today's presentation. So when we look at special needs plans as a whole, these have been around for, gee, now almost 20 years, we'll be here very shortly, reinforced by different pieces of legislation in the time since, and it is aimed at certain vulnerable parts of the Medicare population. There are three types of special needs plans. One we'll discuss today, but one we'll discuss in January as well, and those are the chronic special needs programs that are available in many markets. And there are many chronic conditions that may lead to a CSNP, chronic special needs plan, being made available in your market. Now, that's an entirely different presentation we'll do in January, but just because one of these conditions come in play, it doesn't necessarily mean you have a chronic special needs plan available to in your market for that condition. Most commonly where you see them, well, they have to deal with the heart, lungs, or diabetes is the ones you find most frequently. So something to keep in mind. There are ESRD chronic needs plans in certain markets, not as widely available, 
um, but you'll see them in much higher populated areas. And that's something that's, and once again, part of that CSNP uh, conversation. There is an institutional special needs plan, an ISNP, for folks that live in a particular setting, mostly an institution like a nursing home or if they need nursing home care at home. Most of these programs are not available to the broker channel, hence the line through on this slide. However, the po program that we speak of today is the dual special needs program where individuals have both Medicare and Medicaid. The levels of assistance under Medicaid is one of the things that make a difference for us as to whether or not these plans would be in their best interest. And we'll go into detail on that in just a moment. To enroll in a DSNP, a dual special needs plan, well, the consumer has to have Part A and be enrolled in Part E or B, or at least entitled to Part A. They need to qualify for Medicaid assistance, normally at the minimum of a QMB level, to fully access benefits. There are some exceptions in certain markets to that, where certain carriers will take a partial into their dual special needs plan and the person receives full benefit. As a general rule, that is not the case. And it's important for us to recognize that the language of these uh, Medicaid programs can and will vary in many cases from state to state. So if we look at a dental special needs plan, we need to make certain that we are aware specifically of the market that we're targeting because they need to re reside in a particular service area and we need to make certain that the plans are available and if so, what are the requirements for the enrollment? The next parameter on this is they do not have special, they do not have, pardon me, end-stage renal disease. Well, gee, John, that went away a year or so ago on regular MA plans, stuck around for some D SNPs. Now, exceptions apply. We need to make certain, however, that we handle that very, very carefully. Keep in mind, there are chronic special needs plans in certain markets that this might satisfy that requirement. However, we need to make certain in our market, we're prepared for the do's and don'ts. Generally across the country, you know, you, you got some of the same parameters. We wanna make certain, however, that in your market, we're dealing with things on a proper basis. Keep in mind, if someone enrolls in a dual special needs plan, it has to have drug coverage incorporated into it. So it's not like an MA program, an MA only program, where we see a popularity of those types of, of Medicare Advantage plans that are targeted at, let's say, the veteran population because they're getting their meds from the VA. Someone's in a DSNP, drug coverage comes with it. We need to make certain we understand that. However, in these circumstances on a dual special needs plans, they have additional coordination services that help make certain that they get the maximum benefits under at, from those underlying coverages, from the Medicare benefit that they're accustomed to, which are included in the MAPD plans, including the DSNPs, but also through the Medicaid benefit that they have. Because there are certain circumstances for a, a person who's accustomed to custodial care through a home health health agency. That continues under the Medicaid benefit, but is often a point of confusion when someone comes into an MA plan, if it's a dual plan or not. So we need to be aware of that. We also want to make certain that we realize that the special election period for these programs changed a couple of years ago, where it's not month to month, it's once per quarter through the first three quarters. That's our way of helping these individuals throughout the year. We also need to make certain that we realize that sometimes these folks don't remember when they change plans or whatever it happens to be. Most of the carriers through their producer help desks have services that help you understand not only the level of assistance they get on the Medicaid or LIS programs, but also have they taken advantage of that set through into the quarter already? Because if they have, well, gee, we got to wait till the next quarter in order to change them. These coverages do take effect the first of the month after the application has been submitted. So some pretty rapid response for these folks, but we got to make certain that we are dancing to the piper 
that has uh, laid out the opportunity for us. It is also important for us to know that this is a population that really needs your help. And when an agent visits with the folks that qualify for these programs, they're two times as likely to want that agent to direct them to the plan that they want to see as the best benefit for them. And much like the regulations we have now, where we have the disclaimer of, hey, there, I'm not contracted to make available to you every plan that's available in your market, there may be multiple DSNPs available as well. So we want to make certain that we follow the compliance guidelines, however onerous they may be, but we also want to make certain that these folks realize that we're selecting different programs for them based on the discussion, the fact-finding they're having with them. That's why we're asking you all the questions we are, Mr. Ms. Prospect. We do that to make certain that your drugs fall in line with the formularies because the formularies are different from plan to plan in many cases. And we're doing the best we can to provide the information you need to make the choice that's best for you. And so we're going to follow through and make certain that we do that. So in order to do that, we need to make certain that we are prepared for this population. If you haven't dealt with the low income folks very much in the past, you'll realize that these appointments tend to be a bit longer and they may also include more parties that are involved in the ultimate uh, choice selection that comes into play. That's a good thing though, because it not only helps us when we properly explain to everyone that's necessary, they stick better that way, our persistency, our retention is higher, but it may also offer us an opportunity then to speak to the folks that are helping them with the decision with their insurance needs. Well, they're not on Medicare, John. Well, you're an insurance agent. You got a whole portfolio of products that can help them. Look at that as an adjunct way of marketing, a great way to do it. So we need to make certain that we're up on the products, what makes it different. We practiced it. We were comfortable with our delivery of our presentation. We're targeting the right type of plans not only the right type of individual, but the plans that we need that are in our market. And we'll show you just how you do that. We need to be contracted and certified with them and then leverage that information, not only with the prospects that we see one-on-one, -on -one, but also in the community in which we are offering these programs. It is a great program to talk to and address in seminars and webinars. So going into different avenues of centers of influence in our community, faith-based organizations, other providers that are working this population or located in areas where they are more uh, accustomed to this population, that can make a huge difference for us simply by being prepared. We got tools that help us. Carriers are really, really good about getting us the information that help explain it. So some of the different recordings like this piece is taken from a United Healthcare recording, fairly short, but if you're doing health fairs or something of that nature, you can put this bad boy on a loop at your, at your booth and it's walking through it and it's piquing the interest because, okay, visuals are important, motion is important, the things that will attract people to our point of information dispersal versus the guy down the street, the gal down the aisle that are doing maybe the same things or maybe not with the same em emphasis, but it's a great way for them to stop and go, hey, this person has what I need. As I mentioned, a whole bunch of different programs that can help you through the different carriers. But specifically, we want to make certain that we're able to identify what's available in our market. So let's go to the old standard Medicare.gov. We go in there and we look at finding health and drug plans. We select some different things through the use of um, the filters that are available in, uh, to us, plugging in the zip code and the plan type. We're gonna look at the Medicare Advantage programs. We're gonna look at a minimum of the Medicare Savings programs to make certain that these plans show up for us. And then since we're looking just for plan availability, we can skip through the drug selection at this point in time. 
Now, that's not something you want to do when you have the prospect in front of you be using this as a way of determining plans or through our Medicare Center program that can help you as well. But this is going to get us into the plan types much more quickly. And it'll lay out all these different programs that are there for you. And you'll see in this particular selection, I have selected a zip code in, in Dallas County. Hey, I live pretty close to it. That's a big population here. It'll lay out all the MA plans that are available to us. But you'll notice when we click into the uh, choices we have, we generally these are an HMO product. But you're seeing some more recent um, offerings that are being made that are available on a PPO chassis as well. And as we do that, we're able then to click into those special needs programs and it'll pull up an additional number of these plans. And how do we know it's what we're after? Well, gee, it's telling you. As you go through these programs, you see that designation of DSNP and it'll tell you what chassis it's on for the delivery of those benefits. Is it an HMO, most common, or is it a PPO? So that gives us the opportunity to do some different things. So let's look at the website and actually let's take a quick peek as to how this does it for you. This is pretty quick. I won't uh, delay some of the things that we're doing what we need to. So let's pop in. Gee, John did it. has been doing a little prep here. Once again, we'll look at at least programs with a med. Medicare Savings Program. I'm going to skip past the drugs. We're looking for plan types, not necessarily a ranking of the programs. It'll think. Hopefully, it's thinking. And we'll see then the programs that are available to us. Imagine the Jeopardy theme going in the back of your head there. And let's make this think for us and work for us. Incorporate that in, load it. And then we go through the selections. And there you go. No. It's going to show us then these plans as they're available to us. I'm gonna double check and make certain. Here we go. Gee, John, you skipped that important key there. Let's apply this. Ten plans on a slide. There, okay, let's let's look. Gee, on the first of the bottom of this page, here we go where we have a different chassis on a DSNP. So we've got some things popping up here really quickly. In this market, you got the Cigna uh, Total Care Program, a DSNP on an HMO basis. And then you have the United Plan, a DSNP on the point of service basis. So this is gonna tell you what programs that they are there that are there for you. And that's a crucial part because these listings, particularly when you don't put in medications, aren't really an indication of uh, the viability of the plan for that individual because, hey, they had drugs they're using in a whole bunch of the, the, the circumstances. But it gives you kind of a an overview of some of the different plans that are there. But you'll want to dive into, once you determine that that plan's available, into the information specifically for that program, into the plan details, and then put them in a compare basis should you choose to do so. Because a lot of the times, you got these wonderful base benefits that you see and many of just the standard MA plans too, but those social determinant of health pieces are a big, big piece. And they're part of the commercial pitch that we see on television. The whole, uh, you have a, a card that you can use for over-the-counter medications. And some of these carriers are becoming very, very adept at the use of those cards where they can use them now to pay energy bills or uh, some other things that you might not consider or consider a medical expense. Well, they may not be a, a forward a Medicare expense, but they may be factors that influence a health condition. So we've we've seen that a few years ago, even in the chronic plans, where in Central Texas, where it gets pretty toasty, one of the chronic plans had an air conditioning benefit. 
So you got to make certain that we look at and become a fi- uh, familiar with the benefits of these different DSNP plans in our market. And it's very simple then to say, okay, here's what I got. Am I contracted with the right carriers? Am I contracted with the choice of carriers? Or do I want to look at one particular carrier because they're predominant in our market, make certain I have that in my portfolio, and then become a visible point of contact for your area agent manager with that carrier because they may well have, oh, what's that magic word? Leads. Someone asked a little earlier, how can I find these people? Well, that's one way to do it. Have the carrier find them for you. And in many circumstances, they want someone who is contracted, certified, and familiar with the plan benefits to offer these programs to them. It may be as simple of a, okay, we've got a person that raised their hand for this. Uh, They're best qualified for a dual special needs plan. This is an opportunity for you to go and sell. And you'll find that most of the carriers now don't have in-house feet on the street, or at least not the number that they've had in the past. They may have telesales, but one of the things that you see, the persistency on a dual special needs program, the delivery system, how they enrolled, it can make a difference. You're doing it pure telephonically, persistency, that retention tends to be a little lower than if you have a face-to-face, because a lot of this is relationship selling as well. And that telesales agent doesn't necessarily tie in everybody that's part of that decision-making process. Because remember, we want them in our area of sight, so they help us with the person who is the beneficiary and now member of the plan to fully take advantage of the benefits that they have, but also is that then that decision maker part of our prospect pool moving forward? Where do you find them? Well, to answer that question, can't do it really quickly. And you know, for folks who've been on my webinars, I talk fast in many circumstances, but but I don't do it quickly. I have a lot of slides sometimes. Well, with this, to start, you go to where they eat, sleep, pray, socialize, and access services. How's that? Uh, for a mouthful, or go to where they live, go to where they worship, go to where they seek care. And care in certain circumstances is the assistance programs for things they need on a day-to-day basis to make it through the month day-to-day. So let's look at some of these places and how we find them. We're looking at folks that are low-income individuals that are in many cases, they may well be the working poor where they are still employed on Medicare, but they have more month than monies and they qualify for assistance. They may be folks that are unemployed or retired. They may be physically disabled. Remember that under 65 population, that's such a huge segment of this market, 6 million people nearly across the country. Um, They may have disability because of mental situations. In this circumstance though, if you're dealing with that individual, we wanna make certain that we enter into a contract with a person that is aware of what's going on. And this population many times has the power of attorney in the hands of someone else. And we wanna make certain that once again, we're tying in the proper people to make this decision. The homeless as well, that's a little bit of a challenge because you go to shelters or whatever, and we wanna make certain that they have an address that shows up in, in, in the proper service area. Because oh, otherwise you, you can't get them into the program because they don't aren't able to document they live in that service area. Food banks are a great place for many of the carriers to set up shop. And these are folks that realize they need help for sustenance, plain and simple. They can't afford the food that they need just to get through the month and food banks can help. Now, since there's a service being rendered there, we want to make certain that we're compliant on how we deliver our information. So we're a proper distance away from the source itself, and we collect leads in that fashion. We want to make certain that we're able to find these food pantries. Pardon me, I got that urge to sneeze, and I didn't want you all to hear it, so I went blank there for a minute. And you can find it through the website, foodpantries.org. It'll lay out the, the information you need to find these individuals. 
or that itchiness of the nose when you know you need to sneeze and it just won't come. Uh, and it'll pull up the information on uh, these locations, including uh, their contact information. Great way to have a pitch, in a manner of speaking, prepared. A little bit of a, a modified uh, cut down curriculum vitae, a, a, a resume of sorts as to who you are, what you offer, and what your proposed benefit to this organization would be. These food banks uh, do very many wonderful things and are a great place to volunteer as well. Uh, so it's something to be considered uh, when it comes to marketing the population. There are things we need to do, much like any type of community activity, to make this effective. This is an opportunity for us to educate that front gate, that gatekeeper. This is a, a population that it really helps to drop by and not call. You get a better response. It creates a sense of urgency. They're going to bring in some different things. There are then an opportunity for you to make use of the marketing tools from the carriers, that health products catalog that's available in many cases, the benefits brochure, dental brochures, whatever it happens to be. And it gives us then the opportunity to do some different things with the tools that are provided to us, in most cases at no cost or a minimum cost, to help us market properly. Point here goes back to that acronym guide. It's important for us to use the words that are easy for them to understand and exclude our lingo, our acronym. It is important for them to realize, the gatekeeper and everyone that works there, that you're passionate about helping these individuals. And then, of course, getting that contact information from the people that make the decisions as to whether or not you can participate in this venue, get their contact information and do something here in the old fashioned way. You know, it's nice to follow up in an email, obviously that very quick, but somehow writing out a thank you can make a big difference. And then you have that piece that's on their desk and not in their computer. So you're easier to remember if we can put it that way. And it makes a big difference as to how, and uh, you can do things consistently with that particular location. And that applies in any of these tips that we'll lay out as to where you find these individuals. There are, of course, low-income housing units throughout many of the areas. That, and it always, yeah, they're more frequently found in higher levels of population. But my hometown in rural Nebraska has subsidized housing. And it's got a population of 1,510 people. So it's there for you wherever you're marketing. So we just have to be aware of these folks, where they are, and how we can then make our services available. Keep in mind, these folks may be hit up for presentations for a number of different reasons, and we want to make certain that they realize we had that full portfolio, hence that opening piece with all those different carriers and products. Well, what's the hot button for this particular location? And in many cases, it is the programs we offer on a DSNP basis, particularly those social determinant of health benefits that don't show up in the basics. These are those transportation benefits and over-the-counter pieces that can make a big difference. Am I going to buy uh, some groceries that last me a couple, two, three days, or am I going to buy some cough syrup and other, self, other products that I'm going to self-medicate with? Keep in mind. It's where the dollars are spent in many circumstances. So in many cases, these are people that are available throughout the community, and it gives us then the idea of how to find them. We're talking about low income housing. Well, here's a couple of websites that help you find those locations. And it may be something that you drive by frequently and didn't even realize it was low income housing. Just because it's for people that are of lower income doesn't necessarily mean it's run down or older or whatever it can be, but you see a lot of these being built and some of them are fairly new and we don't need to judge the book by the cover, so to speak. Low Income Housing US, you find out detail in any particular market and where they are. It is a great way for this then to get all of 
the contact information and the locations that are there. Because remember, one of the things we talked about with this is, yeah, some folks will smile and dial for this, but popping in, determining who the contact person is, they can't see us. You don't necessarily want to push for an appointment the first day. If you can, fine and dandy, but set up appointment thereafter. So um, I'm going to check for a question here that popped up really quickly. When we're talking about when they can, when they can, uh, uh, sign up that goes back to that special need or that special election period so if someone is on a, a regular hmo for the first of the year you can use the special election period beginning january 1st to change their coverage so there's things you can do through that first quarter second quarter third quarter um, that can make it an opportunity uh, for us to do what's best for that individual and ourselves to make certain that it works for us you will find an audience within uh, trailer parks as well. Now, the air, this area may have the near poor. They may not qualify for a dual special needs plan in its entirety, but they may qualify for an assistance that will trigger that special election period that gives us the opportunity to go in and visit with those folks about the choices they have. Remember, 70% plus didn't make a comparison during the annual election period. You're in front of them. You can roll in with your regular presentation, consider all of their needs, and make it work for them. Do a lot of things socially to draw uh, folks to you. You can sponsor a, a monthly activity board at these locations, wherever it is, however they live, and what setting that is, and then doing some of the different things that establish your name in that location. You're building relationships and you are becoming accustomed to the folks that visit through these different uh, activities. And well, gee, you know how great it is to be called by your name. You recognize them. Hello, Mr. Smith. Hello, George. Hello, Louise, whatever it happens to be. Then all of a sudden you see smiles crack up and they're talking about, well, I don't qualify for that one. My friend in the next apartment does a great way for you to get some help in that circumstance too. One of the really great avenues to find these folks is to go to where they worship. A lot of times we're dealing with an older population or as we mentioned already, the disabled who faith isn't very, very important to them and they're active within that organization. And how do you find people in those places then as well? Well, much like we did with where do they live? We need to find out exactly um, what the size of the congregation is. Do they have a particular population? It can open up for you through that discussion uh, ways to offer other product uh, presentations as well. Um, and that can make a big difference because it then enables us to rotate topics through. Where if we're doing things in a particular church or synagogue or mosque on a monthly, quarterly, however you're doing it basis, I would do things at least twice a year when you go in to establish a relationship. But you may have within your presentation piece, and I have this in a different presentation that we deliver, a bit of information about you. And these are the topics that are available to you to offer to your congregation. And that may include presentations on long or short-term care, or on final expense, or on the multitude of topics that are available to people in the Medicare world, particularly this population. These are the assistance programs that are available to you through the government. Now, I don't work for Medicare, but I'm giving you the information that they have for us to see if it fits your particular situation. So do you need help with the cost of your medications? Here's a presentation we can do on the extra help program, the low income subsidy. Are medical costs, even with your coverages, hard for you to handle? Well, let's talk about Medicare Advantage plans and specifically the programs that we're discussing today, the dual special needs plans. When you're partnering with a particular carrier, they have presentations set for you. You don't make it back up. You don't have to worry about getting them approved or are they compliant or not? The carrier is going to help you with it. They're going to help you with the marketing material as well. 
Now that may be then a branded presentation that is a different type of filing to make certain that our, our activity is filed correctly. Carriers are gonna help you with that too. But it, if we're doing things on a generic basis, we got presentations from CMS that can help you in that area. Where do you find them? Well, gee, God bless Google. God bless the internet, I guess. No pun intended when we're talking about faith-based organizations. Christians, here you go. Mosque locations, synagogue locations, and then even let's look at places that were, uh, God helps those who help themselves in manner of speaking with the nutrition programs for these folks. But when you look at the faith-based organizations, you got ways of finding them no matter what faith is involved and get the details we need to contact them in one means or another. Once again, much like what we do in uh, the housing units, uh, many of the faith-based organizations have regular events depending upon the size of that uh, faith community. Some of the larger ones, they do things with regularity. Some of the others, well, you might be the organizer of that and you might be the only uh, offering through that presentation, obviously, since you're the one setting it up. So it's a great way to make certain that you are uh, getting in touch with people that in many cases, they're not responding to Joe Namath or, or William Shatner or J.J. Walker or William Devane or whoever else happens to be, Joe Man Montana or whatever that's on television. These are people that aren't necessarily responding to direct mail either, even though direct mail into the dual community is the one of the letters that give us the highest weight rate of return. Something to consider in just a moment as well. And when we look at partners that are delivering the care of the programs that we're offering, this is a big deal because it goes beyond the doctors. It allows us to talk to the social workers and the people that are in uh, uh, part of the hospital administration. Dentists, the DSNIP carriers have programs specifically targeting dental organizations. And that goes beyond then just the DSNIP population. We have a couple, two, three dental programs we sell in our pockets for folks that when we're talking to these dentists, well, gee, what about the people who aren't on Medicare? You got an answer. So you got some things in all delivery of care circumstances. But when we look at doctors, specifically primary care physicians, this is a great way for you to get in good with a doctor, so to speak, because you are taking that pressure off the staff that in many cases don't have the time or the education to properly present these programs. So when you look at them, gee, you got a couple of avenues you can take. You got a provider directory to work through. And if they're not in a directory, well, gee, that may well mean they don't have a contract for this sort of thing. And we have a different way of identifying prospects for other programs. You can help the odds of this by looking at providers that are in low income areas because they're seeing these people anyway. And then we have the tools that are uh, available to us through the different carriers, either branded or on a generic basis that help us with the message. Dentist, man, they got a ton of information that can help you work through the dental population. Direct mail, I mentioned the fact that these SNP letters, because you're setting parameters as to where they're going to, uh, you get the best rate of return on these than you do of any, just about any piece of mail that you're kicking out there that's compliant. Keep in mind, you get a high response if you're offering them the moon, may not be compliant, we're all getting in trouble, and the person all they're after is the gimme that's part of the direct mail piece. It's not the case when you talk about DSNIP because you're talking about dollars in their pocket can make a huge deal. And remember, the outreach into these programs doesn't necessarily stop with, uh, well, gee, it failed at DSNIP because they don't qualify. Well, they qualify for something, don't they? And you have an opportunity to speak with them because they said, hey, I want to talk to you. So it gives you an opportunity to once again, go back to your portfolio and help them across the spectrum of the Medicare population or non-Medicare population as it may be. So some of the things that make us successful across the board, can't underestimate a couple of things and that's the referral process and being consistent in our approach. 
It not only establishes our identity, but it helps us be more comfortable in our presentations and doing so correctly. One of the some of the reasons why you want to do that with us here at Premier, well, people, your agent success managers. Before I even flip a slide on this, if they don't have an answer, they've got people they can talk to. That was the regional vice president for a large, well, the large carrier for the central region for these products for a number of years. We watch these programs in their development and how they are becoming so much more prevalent in the marketplace. Penetration in this market's not as heavy and more and more carriers are offering these programs. We can do some things too to make certain that you have the programs that are necessary to handle the people that may not qualify for the DSNP themselves. So those dental programs or hospital indemnity or cancer or critical illness plans. You can create an electronic profile through SureRC, Surance, uh, Surance Bay, and contract with carriers electronically to make certain that it happens as quickly as possible. Keep in mind, these programs, the DSNP programs, or like the MA plans, you got to make certain that you're certified for them. We're looking at a particular carrier. We're going to send a direct electronic link for that carrier speed process as well. We also want to make certain that you cover your financial backside with that discounted E and O for qualified agents. What's a qualified agent? Well, you contract with us for something. That makes you a qualified agent. But this is a program you own. So it's not like adding you to a blanket E and O program for just one carrier. We're huge as an organization, Premier Marketing is. We don't offer everything everywhere. No one does, no matter what they tell you. This covers this requirement with the insurance companies, regardless of whom you contract through. You own this protection. And we also offer discounted continuing education through our association with WebCE to make certain that your license stays in play. And you have an opportunity to add through your own benefit package through a modified guarantee issue disability income plan on yourself that you're paid a commission on. Because keep in mind, as independent agents, you're responsible for your own benefit package. Great way here to protect your ability to earn dollars. Much as where today's presentation is being recorded, past presentations have been as well. You want some additional help on how to approach and how to successfully market faith-based organizations? Well, we've done presentations on that in the past, and by golly, they happen to be recorded and they're here ready for you 24 seven product uh, for specific carriers. That sorts of things are available to you through these websites 24 seven. And of course, your agent manager is gonna follow up with a link to today's presentation as well, so you have it. We do also offer a specific page on our website to make certain that you're aware of full compensation for these programs. Keep in mind, MA plans, and that includes MAPD plans, no wiggle room for extra programs, incentives, uh, dollars, marketing dollars, those sorts of things um, based on production. There are, however, other products you offer that are med subs, final expense, uh, ancillary programs where you're paid possibly some additional dollars there that may qualify you for carrier trips and may help you qualify for our incentive programs as well, help on direct mail, our uh, agent trip that is now back in section. Uh, session past the old uh, pandemic days. So it's there for you. And we do offer access to Medicare Center, that place where you can go with a single login. You got multiple coding engines. You're able to do side by side comparisons, including the DSNP plans after you collect that scope of appointment and recording your calls. And it's all stored for that 10 year uh, period that's necessary if you sell them or not, all there in this system. You have an opportunity for that Pearl, your personal microsite that comes at no cost as part of this program and a CRM that's available to you to help track these individuals and see which are most prone to a change through switcher tags that can be applied to them as well. There is, of course, to the lead center where you can buy leads through this program, many times discounted for different products. They're put right in your CRM. So they're easy to track, they're easy to pursue, and they're all there for you. We also have different resources within this unit that helps you be more effective in the different areas. You know, uh, sales scripts, um, different things you can follow, different things you can use to use. It has a mobile application as well. And uh, to quote JJ Walker on those bloody commercials, it's free. 
as a contracted agent with Premier or one of our integrity partners, that access doesn't cost you a dime. We have other lead programs that are made available to you too. If you smile and dial for other programs, say for dental or final expense, well, we can get that list to you at no or low cost, butt it up against do not call so you're nice and compliant. You're not one of those shops where, okay, today I've already gotten four calls, you know, offering me assistance in one way or another, and they're obvious uh, boiler rooms in another country. You're doing it compliantly, should you choose to do so. I mentioned, however, too, those different programs we have out there to help you be uh, more effective and more comfortable in approaching different centers of influence in your target market. And that includes retail marketing that many folks as of last week thought, well, maybe I'm done with that. No, you're not. If you're in a retail setting, you're working it year round to really make it pay off and set yourself up for next open enrollment as well. How to approach these faith-based organizations, how to approach providers, how to approach carriers that have leads in many circumstances. Are we using social media leads? We have a program for that. What's your direct mail support? What? We already talked a little bit about Lead Center, but give me more detail. What about a T65 locator where if I'm in the field, I need help in a particular geography? We can do it. And then a sales track for the referrals. So it reminds us when and how to ask for a referral without it seeming like we're asking for a referral. You're not Herb Tarlick from WKRP with a plaid jacket opening up and saying, hey, you want to buy a watch? Doesn't work that way. Uh, the mail support program that we have, and I apologize, I know we're going a little long in this, but we did a, uh, a program on low-income subsidy and Medicare savings plans, a webinar last week that gives you some of the financial data for the specifics of that. We'll make certain that link's available to you. But this is a way to get in and mail consistently. Based on production, it drives down that cost, so you're able to do so consistently. You can qualify for both health programs and through final expense um, and do it through one of our preferred lead vendors who we vet to make certain that they are sending out compliant material, but also have the systems to get the returns back to you on the responses as quickly as possible. So you can hit them up when they're as hot as possible. For other folks, you may also want to say, hey, I got a hole in my calendar. I want to go outside the lead center. You got anything else for me? Well, we got direct mail responses, never been touched, pretty fresh. Prices will vary from area to area, time of year, and product that comes into play, but it is a great way for you then to fill holes in your calendar pretty quickly in this fashion as well. The internet leads, well, like everybody, our demographic here on this is through Facebook, the most commonly used uh, social media tool for our target population. We have a system in there, a program in there for final expense and Medicare as well. Keep in mind, a microwave lead. What do you mean by that, John? Well, I've got a friend who got a lead at 2.30 in the morning from someone on the internet. She reached out to contact them at six o'clock that same day in the morning. And they'd already talked to somebody else. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, my, my cough is coming into play here. So the uh, a, a question popped up. We talked about the qualification for income. It's an individual income or a household income if it's a family or a spouse you do have um if they're caretaker for grandchildren or if they have adult grandchildren in the house that can come into play as well the mobile app name well it's still uh the medicare center program it's just on an app chassis so you can download it to your your desktop or you your or laptop or smart device or your phone um all off the same name type of program so another question popping up um, yes you will be getting uh, the the link to this presentation and we'll make certain that a pdf of the presentation itself is available to you as well lead center i talked about it in detail but it's a great way for you to go in there you can get the leads delivered in a couple of different fashions live transfer it'll show up in your crm as well um, and, and you can turn it on and off or through the whole sending you details electronically through your CRM. Costs will vary according to the program, time of year, that sort of thing. We have sales, believe it or not, that go on in different areas, particularly in areas that might have a greater response. So it drives down the cost. It's supply and demand. But you control 
of lead flow, how much you want to spend, and where the leads are coming from. At T65 Locator, this is also a program that you download to your desktop, laptop, or your smartphone. You register for it. They see that you have a contract with us. It's available to you. Once again, JJ Walker type free. And it'll tell you where these people live according to the parameters that you set up for that search. A great way if you're stacking appointments in the in the field, one cancels. Well, gee, is there someone around here I can talk to? Well, it might be a center of influence that is nearby, a doctor or a, a church or whatever, or it may be an opportunity to door knock in a particular area for products that enable you to do so, final expense or dental, whatever it happens to be. You can't door knock for MA, including DSNP or PDP programs. So keep that in mind. But it's a great way for you to identify other folks to talk to in that same area that you're working. This program that we talk about with referrals, it's not just the selling process. It's a way to go back and engage your current book of business and that CRM within Medicare Center or whatever system that you're using for that. A great way for you to work back through and say, hey, I got a great dental program that came out in your area. Do you know of people that need help in that area? They're not asking them directly for their business, but they may be talking to, oh, gee, yeah, my brother-in-law, he's looking to help with the cost of a new set of dentures. Or, gee, I'm interested in that. Can I get detail? So it's a great way for you to engage your book of business. We do all this because we want your business. We want to make certain that these programs that are of specific interest year round are available to you and that you're comfortable with the programs, how to pursue them, how to find that population and make it work for you as part of your personal marketing plan. You can put these in play really, really quickly. The MA carriers that you have, well, I'd wager to say the majority of them have a decent program. Is it the right one for you? In many cases, yeah. So it's making certain that you're certified, ready to go with it. You put it in your program. You add to your marketing plan that you've, uh, well, gee, John, I sat through your webinar on Friday talking about planning through 2023. I want to plug this into it. You betcha. And you put it in play quickly. So as John Wayne said in the movie, the cowboy slap a piece of bacon in that biscuit, saddle up, let's ride, because we're burning daylight. I kind of added a couple, two, three quotes there together. Um, but it's something you can put into play and you can put it in play now. So at this point in time, I want to check really quickly to make certain I didn't miss any questions. Bear with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about uh, making the information available to you, the content, the commissions that are the same, where to find the prospects, um, kind of dual beneficial. We talked about the quarterly sets. Uh, qualify for DSNP with you know, family or income individual, mobile app, presentation copy. Yep, it's going to be available to you. So we have the questions answered. So at this particular point in time, it's time for me to give thanks. I know we're moving into a different holiday there, but I want to thank you. If you've worked with Premier in the past and you wanted further detail about this to make certain that it's part of what you want to do, thank you for working with us. We appreciate your business. We look to deepen that relationship as well. For those of you that aren't as familiar with us, thank you for coming in and investigating this. We hope to do business with you in the very near future. But regardless, if you're on this webinar or if you're revisiting it again in the future or you've come across it through our, our library, video library there, thank you for the investment of your most precious resource, your time. I thank you for spending that with us here today. And so until we're able to visit with you again, you know, webinars, hey, it's like they say, we're here all week. We're ready to go. Um, it will be made available to you. And I look forward to visiting with you in future presentations as well. Give us a jingle at 1-800-365-8208. You want some information from your uh, agent success manager, your, your contact marketer within our organization. If you're new to us and you don't have one, you'll get one. Or you can reach out on our website. You got those lovely jot forms you can fill out for additional information that way. And we'll be reaching out to you um, as an attendee as well. All that said and done, until we're able to visit with you again, I wish you good selling. Thanks so very much. We'll talk to you soon.